A simple method for determining dynamic viscosity is to use the falling spheres method. To use this method, we need the following apparatus. Here we have a tall graduated cylinder filled with some gear oil. In this case, we're using this Quaker State product. We have some nylon spheres. We have some large nylon spheres, some medium nylon spheres, and some small diameter nylon spheres. We need a hydrometer for measuring the specific gravity. We need a thermometer, a stopwatch, a weigh scale, a micrometer, and of course, a thermometer. So to perform this experiment, the first thing we're gonna do is measure room temperature because the dynamic viscosity of oil is very dependent on its temperature. So today, room temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. Second, we're gonna measure specific gravity using the hydrometer. So we simply read through wherever the hydrometer rests. I'm not gonna give you the value, that's for you to do in the lab. However, moving on, we need a scale or a balance to measure the mass of the nylon spheres. So what I like to do is tear the balance with an empty tray and then place about 10 of the nylon spheres inside the tray, record its mass, and then to get the mass of a single sphere, an average mass of the single sphere, simply take that number and divide it by 10. Next, we have to measure its size. To measure its diameter, we're going to use this micrometer. So simply take one of the balls and measure its diameter. I like to take a few measurements just to make sure I get a good nominal size. And then for each of the spheres, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the steady state velocity as we drop it into the graduated cylinder. Another very important piece of equipment is this fluorescent light behind the cylinder. That helps to illuminate the sphere as it falls through the oil and makes it a lot easier for us to take a displacement reading over time so we can measure its terminal velocity. So let's go ahead, take some measurements, and then drop some spheres and see if we can calculate the dynamic viscosity of this particular oil. To demonstrate this lab, what I'm going to do is drop one of each of the spheres into the center of the graduated cylinder. I'll start with the smallest sphere, taking care to drop it directly in the middle of the sample, or in the middle of the cylinder, without any spin, so that we don't get any edge effects falling close to the wall. So here's the first sphere. You can see that it doesn't take long to reach its terminal velocity. Now I'm going to drop the medium sized sphere. It, it has already reached terminal velocity. And finally, I'll drop the largest sphere. Okay, hey, here I am in my kitchen because of COVID-19. <laughs> I thought I'd do a demonstration of uh, measuring viscosity with a spindle viscometer. You'll get to use this instrument in lab number one. And it's also relevant for our discussion of uh, dynamic viscosity in chapter one. So what I've got here is a container 
full of uh, water and green dishwashing liquid. I've added some dishwashing liquid to make the uh, fluid more viscous. And we're going to measure its viscosity. I should mention that this type of commercial viscometer is widely used in any industry where you manufacture fluids or liquids. Uh, so in the food industry, it'd be used for you know quality control of products like soups and things like that. Uh, it's used in the pharmaceutical industry, in the chemical industry, and in industries where you where viscosity is really critical, like in paints, you'd use it to uh, control the quality of the product. So what we have here is uh, I've attached here uh, a spindle on this viscometer. This is spindle number 61 that I've attached. Let me just make sure it's nice and firmly attached. Yes. And the way this instrument works is it this spindle rotates in the fluid and the instrument measures the torque required to overcome the viscous shear stress at the surface of the spindle. And for a given spindle, there's a calibration curve that relates the torque to the, uh, the dynamic viscosity. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, lower this into the fluid. There's a little handle here. We can lower the, the spindle into the fluid. And there's a little, you can't, probably can't see it, but there's a little notch on the, on the shaft that tells you where it has to be to be uh, in the proper location. And then we center it. Okay, and we're ready to go. Let me just recompose the shot. Okay, the uh, spindle has been lowered into the fluid and we're in position here. Let me show the controls here. So you've got control over the speed. This is the speed in RPM. I'm going to set it to, to 30 RPM. I mentioned the spindle number was 61, so you have to have that spindle number selected in the spindle catalog. And now we're ready to turn on the motor and let the spindle rotate. It flashes and, and it continues to flash until the measurement comes to steady state. And so we can see we have a viscosity of about uh, 40 7.6 centipoi. Uh, and what this percentage number here is, is the percentage of the maximum torque that the instrument can measure. So right now we're using about, uh, you know, 23.7% of that torque. And if you press the range button here, you can see that 100% torque corresponds to 200 centipoi. And according to the uh, calibration of the instrument, the viscosity is accurate to plus or minus 1% of the full range of uh, torque. So this measurement, 47 centipoi, is plus or minus uh, 2 centipoi. Okay, so we can go ahead and, so we got something around 47 centipoi. We can go ahead and uh, increase the RPM. So since we have lots of torque left over, so we will go up to 60 RPM, and we should see the torque double. So we were somewhere around 46%, which is true. And we should get more or less the same uh, value for viscosity. Now, of course, we're shearing the fluid at a faster rate. We're shearing it at 60 RPM instead of uh, 30 RPM. And we get the same viscosity because this fluid is Newtonian. The viscosity is independent of the rate of shear. So the fact that we get the same viscosity within the accuracy of the range, and by the way, the accuracy of this range is, of course, the full uh, scale is 100 centipoi at full torque. So that's that'll be about 45 uh, centipoi plus or minus one. And we've still got some torque available, so we can increase this to 100 RPM and make another measurement. We'll let it stabilize. So again, we're getting around 45 centipoi, and the accuracy, the, the full-scale torque would be 60 centipoi, so this is plus or minus 0.6 centipoi. So the viscosity of this uh, dishwashing liquid and water mixture is about 45 centipoi. I should point out that the viscosity of pure water at room temperature is about 1 centipoi. So this mixture is about 45 times uh, the viscosity of pure water. 
So that completes the measurement of viscosity uh, for a Newtonian fluid. Okay, in the previous video, uh, we measured the viscosity of this mixture of dish soap and water. And we found that when we changed the spindle speed on the uh, rotational viscometer, we got the same or more or less the same viscosity independent of the rate at which you were shearing the fluid. That is uh, a Newtonian fluid. That's the behavior of a Newtonian fluid. So for fun, since we've got this new instrument and I've been having some fun with it, I thought I'd try measuring the viscosity of a highly non-Newtonian fluid. Uh, and the easiest one to make is a mixture of cornstarch and water. And I would suggest if you've never done this, go and buy yourself for a couple of bucks a box of cornstarch from the grocery store and mix it with water. You will find that it is quite an amazingly uh, strange fluid. And let me just show you what I mean. Uh, if you, if you stir it gently, it looks like a regular fluid, but if you try to shear it quickly, it, its viscosity increases very rapidly. It's what's called shear uh, thickening or dilatant. And so you can get a sense here of how, how very unusual uh, this fluid is. Okay, so let's have a go. Let's see what the, uh, what the viscosity of, of this fluid is or how it varies with the shear rate. Now I've changed the spindle here. The spindle in this case last time was number uh, 61. It was a much bigger spindle. I've changed it to a much smaller spindle because I'm expecting very high viscosities when I have high uh, rotational rates of the spindle. So let's insert this and Okay, up to the notch, there we go. I might just reframe this image so you can see it a bit better, and zoom in. Okay, so as I mentioned, I have the spindle selected, number 62, the slightly smaller spindle. I'm gonna set off at a uh, rotational rate of 30 RPM. Uh, okay, I think we're ready. We can start the motor going and see what kind of uh, viscosity we get. Okay, so we're getting a viscosity about 152 centipois using only 15% of the available torque on the instrument. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 150, 160, somewhere, somewhere around there. Uh, so in the previous measurement with the uh, water and soap, which was Newtonian, we increased the shaft speed, the rotational speed, and we got the same value for uh, viscosity. Uh, but this is sheer thickening. So as we go from 30 RPM to 60 RPM, we're going to be shearing this fluid at a much higher rate. And you can see, sure enough, the viscosity uh, goes up. Not that much in this case, 200 and, uh, you know, 18, 19, 20 in that, in that neighborhood. You can see it's kind of oscillating around quite a bit. Uh, and let's see what happens if we go up even higher. It's 100 RPM. Oh, and you can see the machine is gone momentarily. That triple or the quadruple E means it's gone off scale. So what's happening here is the spindle turns at 100 RPM. It maximizes out the torque. The motor stops. That reduces the speed of the spindle, which reduces the viscosity, and you can see it oscillating on and off. Uh, so you can see uh, you get much different behavior. You don't get the same viscosity. In fact, what's happening is the viscosity is going off the maximum for the range. It's going above 300. Let's go back down to 60, and you can get some idea. So the lesson here is that for a non-Newtonian fluid like this one, this is sheer thickening, the... Uh, viscosity is strongly dependent upon the shear rate. Uh, whereas for Newtonian fluids, which is almost every fluid you'll deal with in most of your engineering practice, the viscosity does not depend upon shear rate. That's the definition of a Newtonian fluid. And that completes this video.